When setting up a ratcheting patch, ironically, the most simple equipment requires the most complex patch to make it all work together. In this movie, I'm going to pretend that you have just a clock divider, no voltage control, just individual outputs for each clock division, and that you have just a sequential switch, no voltage controlled on the switch. You need to clock through individual inputs to decide what's going to get passed onto its output. And finally, you don't have a fancy sequencer with all these different rows of voltages and triggers. Instead, you have something simple like this RYO VC sequencer, which has one set of voltages and with its optional expander, one row of triggers lining up with each of those stages. Let's see how we patch those together and make that work to create a ratcheting sequence. In this patch, I'm still using the autocontroller as my master clock, but I've set it to a different time division. I'm using a different output of it that I program differently and sending a very fast clock to my clock divider. If you're using a clock divider instead of a multiplier, you need a fast master clock. In this case, I'm now dividing it down by a factor of eight in one of the stages of the quad clock distributor and taking that divided by eight slower pulse and feeding it to the sequencer to step it along and also eventually off to trigger my envelope generators. What I need to do is get different divisions from this quad clock distributor, send it to my switch and decide which one of those to trigger the envelope generators instead. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this signal and instead make this divide by a clock one of the inputs to my sequential switch. Then I'll go ahead and grab another patch cable, take the output of my sequential switch and send that off to my envelope generators. I'll manually set my switch up to channel four. And now we're back to where we started. To create variations, we need to pull different divisions out of this. So I'm gonna use another one of these divisions, take its output, run it to one of the inputs of my switch. In this case, I'm dividing by four instead of dividing by eight. Since I'm dividing by a smaller number, it's a faster clock. And I'll manually switch this to input three. If I slow that down, you can hear now we're getting two triggers for every step of the sequence. And if I wanted to, I could manually switch in between them. But that's kind of messy. It'd be better if the sequencer did it automatically. So what we need to set up is to have triggers aligned to stages in our sequence step through these different inputs on the switch. Now the Latic S210, which I'm using here, is a little unusual among switches. It always ends at four instead of always starting at one. So if I want to go between steps three and four, I need to set my input to stage three and send some of these triggers to trigger my switch. So let's choose stage two to trigger these. So every time we hit stage two, we're switching between input three and four. Now the problem with this arrangement is I only want that ratchet, that trill, to last on one step, not for an entire cycle of sequence. So I need a second trigger to reset my switch back to my normal clock division. To do that, I need to combine multiple trigger outputs from my sequencer. Now quite often to do that, you need to run this through a DC mixer, an impulse integrator, the short bus from low gain, or something like an OR module, a logic module, to say if this input or that input is high, send a signal. It so happens that the RYO trigger expander has diode protection on each of these outputs. That means I could go ahead and do something I would normally never do and use a multiple to connect multiple outputs and send it off to one input. I'm going to show you best practice for now. So let's go ahead and take that trigger Send it to one or input. And choose the very next step and say, now forward to the next step. Now let's take the output of our OR operation and send that to our clock input on our sequential switch. So what's happening is when we hit the stage two, it's flipping to the next sequence step, which is the faster clock. And then when we hit trigger three, it's stepping again to the next step, which is back to input four. And I can go ahead and change this division to have fun, to create different trills. 
Now what if we want a little bit more variation, maybe go in between a twice as fast and four times as fast division? In that case, we need to connect more divisions to the inputs of our sequential switch. And the sequential switch in that case becomes a sequencer. We're sequencing between different clock divisions. So let's set that up. I'm gonna put this back to divide by four, which is a twice as fast clock. And I'm gonna choose a much faster divide by two and make that one of the inputs of my sequence. Now let's say we want to, in our sequence, go back and forth between normal pulse, twice as fast, normal pulse, four times as fast. In that case, I need to take this normal pulse and have it appear on two different inputs in my sequence of switched inputs. Let's go ahead and take a copy of that output and run that into input two as well. So right now we have our old sequence set up or we're going between inputs three and four. In the LATIC S210, I just need to say, reset to step one. And that's the problem, you can get out of sequence here. So let's go ahead and skip a step. There we go. So in our sequence, every time we hit the step two, we say jump one step in our sequence. And every time we get to step three, we're saying jump to the next step in the sequence. So we're jumping back and forth between divide by eight, divide by two, divide by four, and back to divide by eight. Now the problem I've had with sequential switches is sometimes they don't get a clean trigger. It'll bounce and you'll get a double trigger and then you'll be out of sequence. It'll end up sounding like this. Which is kind of cool, but maybe not what you intended. So you have to either manually reset it or better is to send your triggers through some sort of gate processor to clean up your gates. It so happens that the Roland 572 has a gate delay built in. In addition to delaying your gate, it also gives you a fixed duration. It cleans up or reprocesses your gate or trigger to make it a nice clean signal. So if you're having trouble with your switch, ah, see, it did it right here, jumping out of sequence, you need to process it to clean it up.